There we go. Number seven, lucky number seven. Let's get this one kicked off. Will Bob Sled. Is that a phrase or a name? Is that really your last name? Bob Sled? Or Will Bob Sled? Okay, who really cares, right? Let's try this. All right, so structural defect. I have to maybe in some line simply be content with losing my C4 pawn. The C4 pawn is weak because the square it sits on is weak, and now that's a little bit awkward for me. Okay, it's aimed at preventing bishop g5 pins. All right, so I'm going to I'm going to go with f3, I'm going to go with e4, I'm going to go with bishop to d3. I want to have a a big pawn center. There might be some sacrifices against h6 one day. Let's see how black develops pieces. There's a plan of b6, knight c6 to a5, bishop a6 pointing here. And uh, I pretty much abandoned the idea of trying to hang on to this pawn. So let me swing the bat completely around. There is There are some maybe tricks with taking here queen h4, but it's never really enough. It'd only be the queen that's coming out to try and cause my king a headache, but knight takes, pawn takes, queen check, king e2, queen takes here, king f2, and I think everything is quite all right. So let's just follow through. My bishop belongs on d3, so my knight could finally develop to e2. He's probably going to play here. Okay, that's an early kingside castle. I like seeing that move. Let me make sure I get my knight here. So I could quickly castle. And, um, well, actually for, for, you know what, maybe, well, yeah, I'll probably castle, but an idea I could have is g4 and only then knight g3 to f5. And if he's ever taken, which he probably needs to be taken if he arrives on f5, then that would peel open the g file. So I think maybe this was premature to castle kingside. I'm fine with simply closing up the center, watching over c6. There won't be any knight c6 to a5 idea. So I'm no longer, I have, not that I had concern before about maybe losing my c4 pawn, but certainly now there's not really a, a quick road to get at this c4 pawn. There's only one piece that could really put pressure on it, bishop a6, but... I think he, his main focus should be to just watch over f5, and I think, hmm, what do I think? Um, I'm thinking rook to e8, knight to f8 is pretty much the only uh, idea black has here. Let's Let's try to play a little bit quicker. Castle, that's something I was going to do anyhow. I have ideas of g3, f4. If I play f4, pawn takes, you know, if I play f4 without g3, then the pawn could be taken, and this is maybe a reliable home. This I can't believe is good, because he's going to have to go back. So that, that this is, I think, just turning out to be a complete loss of tempo. This There shouldn't be any uh, compensation for the pawn if knight here takes, takes. I'm also, I'm not just winning a pawn, but I'm now striking at the heart of this structure, d6, one that pretty much is not going to be uh, accessible. Yeah, I don't think that this is really working, so I guess maybe... Oh, there's that move. Okay, I really shouldn't be so afraid of that. Queen to d2 would defend c3 and the bishop, though... I mean, I'm okay if I lose this pawn. But uh, there's no reason to lose any material. So just develop and defend. Knight here, I could consider taking and then pushing. Um, although, no, I'm sorry. If knight here, I'll, I'll simply back up. I wonder if g5. Is black going to try for some... Maybe this is an idea. To try and um, hold hold me down from pushing f4... This is this is really the only square black has to play with, the e5 square. 
Okay, if I back up, I'm losing the exchange with knight takes here. So my initial idea was to simply back up. I'm going to do that with the idea that I have a space and I'm going to not be so welcome to trades. So I'm in, I'm looking really for bishop g3 and f4 with some preparation because there's uh, this falling. But let me, as a start, back up here. Oh, there's going to be pressure on this square, isn't there? Hmm. I should have maybe considered that a bit more. I could defend it, though. Queen to a2. Queen to a2. I should have at least considered that. Maybe I played that a, a little bit too quick. I should be okay, though. Queen to a2. I'm going to hang on to him. So, if g5 is not played, now now there's no pressure on this square. So I think g5, but then you know what? I'm still pushing through with this. Pawn takes, rook takes with the tempo on the queen, and then I get to double. I think this is, um. well, th this has already been critical for these last handful of moves. But I think if you're not stopping this move, there's going to be some big trouble. And I think we're going to have some big trouble uh, f4, when played, has the e4 square, which is unprotected. But a simple bishop d3 is going to cover everything with then rook a to e1. I'm ready to now push. Yeah, unless I'm missing any tricks, and I, I don't believe I am. Another thing, f4, if the knight moves, bishop d3, he's unprotected, but they're... They're really not going to be accessible. However, hang on for a moment. F4, knight move, c3, and e4 are hit. But after f4, knight move, there's queen c2 to defend e4 and c3. I'm going to run with that. Yeah, let's run with just kicking. I have a, a clock advantage, which is not usually the case here when I'm playing. Okay. Decision time for the knight. There's two options. Queen c2 is pretty much my next move no matter what. I'm sure there's ways I could be playing with gambiting a pawn, but I see no reason to give up a pawn. I have him boxed out with my bishop on g3. Let's just come over. So my idea next is bishop d3, rook a to e1, and that'll pretty much be it. I don't see a way to improve bishop d3, rook a to e1. And I could slowly improve. Okay. What's this knight up to? Um, I'm going to scoot over maybe just a little bit. I mean, I could play queen here. Attack the knight for a second time. I could think about pushing. E5. Well, the queen is close to trap. I'm going to go with this one. Yeah, just queen to d2. And what next? Oh, actually, this is a threat, a very serious one. Pawn push, deflecting the queen away from the knight. Although, pawn push takes, takes, there's knight f3. But what if I just play one prep move, king h1, then this threat is back on. Mm, let me just calculate a little bit. g5, takes takes knight here yeah I'm just gonna do that okay now I'm pretty sure this is working they didn't have much time there so knight f3 is a fork but I could just pin oh I'm sorry now that the king is here I could actually take the queen with check so that's not working out I mean at the end there's a fork but my queen is entering I have this check too. There's just no time as well. Well, that's kind of interesting. I'm not going to take though. I want to watch over e4. And then that way these rooks don't become activated. If I take here, there's that. So let's grab a pawn. Get my bishop working. And just look for mate soon. Pawn push next, and again, g6 is undermined. All right. Good game. Let's go back. That that really turned out to be trouble just out of the opening. It's easy to go wrong. I know I've experienced it myself on the black end. 
just kind of a, a, a space deficit and mm, well there was a tempo gaining or not a tempo gaining a tempo loss on, on your end with that night age form so let me just dive in and see if we could maybe grab a thing or th thing or two from this game let's see where we at game history right here and let's look from your perspective okay um Imzo Indian with A3. H3, I think, is already a step in the wrong direction. Uh, there might be a reason to hold off on castling because of this pawn avalanche, really, that could be coming down against your king side. You could consider C5 as one move. Uh, you can consider B6 with, again, these, this idea of knight C6 to here. Um, yeah, I, I think this is maybe already a bit on the slow side. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I can't say for sure. It's, see, it, it's really striking me as a bit slow. I don't know. I, of course, this pin is quite annoying. That's true. Not quite sure. This is an option, though. This, this putting pressure on c4. Knight c6 to a5, your bishop on here. I'm looking for an attack. I'm okay again with giving up my c4 pawn. So I get this center, and this seems to maybe be a bit too tame. I, I don't know. Let's see. After that, we have bishop out. What can black do to improve the, this? This I'm not so sure about. What about knight c6? No, that's not working. Here's a, an important tactic. If knight c6 and d5, the knight can't go here well actually yeah it could knight c6 d5 knight here if queen check there is c6 uh, if the queen wasn't there to watch over the knight this idea of knight c6 d5 knight a5 would not be good because of this check for example if you could envision the queen here on e7 trying to reinforce the e5 point this would not be a good idea um but what more can you be doing here hmm Maybe not castle. I wonder if you could lock up this side of the board. There is sometimes the idea of if you can get your knight into a5, like c5. Suppose I don't do anything with the pawn. c5, knight e2. Knight c6, d5, knight here. And then with b6, bishop d7. Bishop d7, by the way, instead of fianchettoing. Um, well, you, you could still try to play against c4, but there might be a reason to keep the bishop on this diagonal and develop. It's a quiet looking move, but the, um, one of the main intentions is to make sure that it, there's not going to be a pesky knight arriving on f5, which is likely going to be an option for the knight when he's on e2. You could see knight e2 to g3, and he's eyeing up this square. And another thing, with this pawn on h6, this is maybe making life more difficult for you to try to defend the f5 square. Of course, you never really want to push g6 when you're down this dark square bishop. It weakens your f6 and h6 squares, but um, just just some things to be considering, surely. c5, knight e2, knight c6, d5, knight a5, and you can consider developing your queen side and castling on uh, the queen side. If you want to do without h6, it's um yeah. If you're going, if you want to do without h6, maybe it's best that you move forward with connecting your knights, so that you could eventually get out of the pin in a more convenient way. All right, but let's let's move forward here. Yeah, I think this is maybe a bit too soon. The kingside castle. It looks uh, logical enough, just the developing stage, but. It's really tough that you're not going to have anything. Neither of us are going to have anything in the center. Well, maybe me. Maybe the white side here with f4 break. But there's nothing that you're able to really do in the center. Or the queen side. Or the king side, judging by the pawn structure. I'm, I'm pointing these things out because I don't see um, a way where you can make a pawn break that will be uh, helpful to your pieces. 
Like wh where where is there a pawn break that's going to help uh, better mobilize your pieces or help your position? And I don't really see that. Whereas I have these ideas of f4, maybe g3 with f4, or g4 knight g3 to f5. It's tough. It's tough to come up with a, a clear plan on the black side, unfortunately. So knight h5 was tried, and you either go back, and then this is just a huge loss of time where you try to play a gambit style, and that was the approach in the game, but it was never really enough, and I don't know that I really overlooked anything from this point. I was thinking here, right around here, instead of the rook move, maybe your best try is to try and at least secure your knight position on e5. Maybe that's the best that you can hope for here, is this g5 move, but then again, it, it, there, there, therein lies the trade-off. Yes, you can maintain your knight position on e5, but at the same time, you're allowing me to open up the f-file and activate both rooks. So it's kind of tough. Okay. So let me just move forward. I don't think there was anything more, really. I just had to be a little bit careful over my f3 square, but... Yeah, it was never really working out. Okay, time as well. All right, um, I'm not sure really what more to add. I guess to be a little bit more uh, careful with that castling move. Again, I've I've done it myself. It's easy to go wrong out of that opening on the black end. Okay, uh, good game.